First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Oh, hello, everybody. Hey, hey. Hello. we survived another week. <laughs> episode three. <laughs> I have no, like, recollection of that episode. So watching it was really fun. And, like, yeah. kind of voyeuristic, because watching the whole Nathan Haley thing unfold <gasps> was, like, brand yeah. new for me. Yeah, that was exciting. It was fun to see it from from this perspective rather than uh, mm -hmm. from just being. And, and I had sense memory. I didn't have a lot of it the last two episodes, but this one I had a lot of sense memory of being there. I remembered being sitting at that table. I remember the whole Cracker Jack scene. Um, and I forgot that it was in ep this episode. I thought that happened later. I thought she was like, I agree to tutor you. And then like later he did that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of cool. That was fun oh. to see. Did you have any idea in the moment that that little bench was going to become like a cultural <laughs> icon in downtown Wilmington? Never in a million years did I think that. I of mean, course. how many people have proposed at that bench? The yeah. photos we see oh, of like yes. engagements and, and, you know, people there with their babies and it's so cool. And their baby's uh, named Haley. <laughs> I know. I know. And like to see it, it, it's just this beautiful two shot. The DP got it just right. And whatever time of day you guys did it, you know, it was like magic hour, the reflection of sunset in the water, or I guess it would have been sunrise because it was supposed to be 7 a.m. Yeah. It's just so pretty. It yeah, was iconic. It was, it was so beautiful. The way the water was glowing and everything. And then mm -hmm. the fact that Nathan looks at her and says that line, <gasps> Don't say I never gave you anything. I mean, that is the oh. line that fans quote to me. More, you know, you were saying your art matters mm. is the one that you get all the time, Hillary. That's the one that I get all the time. Don't say I never gave you anything. It it just um, it meant so much to people. And and I also clocked, which I didn't. I don't know that I clocked it when we were filming. But Haley's still wearing the bracelet at uh -huh. the end of the night. Like she didn't take it off. Why didn't uh -huh. she take it off? That gave me so shivers cute. a little bit because it made mm. me wonder. Like, had Haley ever had? Like a like a little boyfriend in middle school. Like, had Haley ever had mm. that like deep flirtation before? Was this like the first boy that was? Mm. I don't know. Did you guys have a conversation about that? We didn't, but I yeah, I I do remember thinking that and feeling like this is the first. This that's why she's getting drawn in, even though she's trying to be a good friend and you know mm -hmm. just do the right thing and and help someone who's in need. Um, yeah, I mean. The captain of the basketball team. Captain is that is that the word? The lead. So handsome. Yeah. I still don't know basketball terms. But touchdown. You know, he, <laughs> shooting touchdown down game. Touchdown. That's <laughs> so, so Haley in that moment. Funny. <laughs> yeah, I think you hit it. That's that's it. Speaking of things that were incredibly authentic, um, what I like about our show is that there's nothing like cool <laughs> the hazing <laughs> takes place in someone's mom's minivan yeah <laughs> and they just throw him in a puddle like that's it's it it's the worst it's the worst that they do we We're got you wet him. and dirty <laughs> like, what they soaked his clothes with water in his locker was it water, water? Or was it pee do we know uh, I, don't, oh. I don't know that would have been worse because i'll tell you what i had bullies in sixth grade and they put dog in my locker and <gasps> like that was horrendous and i'm your sixth grade bullies were harder than teenage this boys is what I'm in saying. This episode. <laughs> oh my god i mean i was in jersey so maybe <laughs> part of it. yeah oh my gosh yeah that's pretty funny that's all they did was push him in a puddle you look so cute with your little barrettes in this <gasps> oh, uh, in this pigtails. episode yeah was that your idea to do big pigtails i have no idea i don't remember that at all i feel like probably. it must you know it was it probably was and our bosses barrettes. were always like just wear your hair down oh yeah i was like no i want her to look really sweet and innocent she did it worked i mean it worked yeah. even just that last shot of uh, Haley and lucas on the bench and um i, I saw what a baby face i was and just mm -hmm. the innocence and sort of mm -hmm. what 
I caught a moment of the appeal that everybody loved about Nathan and Haley, that it was mm-hmm. so young. We were so young and feeling so many big things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there was such a, like a purity to it. Yeah. The way that you held Haley's experience and held that choice and for this noble idea of saving your friend sort of, you know, took on something that you were afraid of. It it was just so fun to watch. It was fun. Well, let's talk-, talk about the acting range, though, Joy, because my favorite thing on the Internet is that montage that one of your fans cut together of all your kissing scenes what? from when you were on a soap opera. Oh, it was God. like it was what? like the sexiest <laughs> ever um it was so passionate and intense and you did it as like a teenager and that was all pre one tree hill yeah so then to see you flip that switch and just be the most pure little angel on the planet <laughs> i was like this girl knows what she's doing I love it. <laughs> oh it's so fun i had so yeah. much fun with Haley. like with a cool cool character uh, by the way talk about having fun Brooke was like Ooh. a ball in this episode. She print. Mean, my face is still red, you guys. Like, look <laughs> at me and look at you. I'm very red. Oh, my God. It was such a weird, like, when you had that moment uh, at the dock and you were like, oh, this scene. I popped up out of Lucas's backseat and I went, oh, God, this <laughs> scene. Oh, no. Like, I couldn't even look at it. And I remember... Oh, and Hillary, you called me out. You were like, you went from all girls school to this. I was like, listen, I can't talk about it. (laughs) Like, I, I remember being in there and like understanding. They were like, you know, you're doing this thing and, and you've really got to try to seduce him. And they just like kept telling me to be sexier. They were like, well, everything you (laughs) say should be, you know, an invitation. And I look back and I'm like, oh God, a bunch of creepy old dudes wrote this and then like told me what their fantasy was. I don't know about this. You're 21. Could you sex this up? That'd be great. Yeah, exactly. uh, Could you just really, with every word you say, uh, suggest that you'd like to have intercourse with this person? (laughs) Wait, Um, so waiting in the back seat is one, like waiting in the back seat is one thing, but did you girls in high school ever change in the back seat of a car with a boy, like a boy that you liked that was Uh, driving or whatever? No. Really? No. No. I did. No. What? Joy? Joy? (laughs) You were kissing on TV (laughs) with all that skill. No, Are you serious? I, yeah. Well, I also, I mean, again, God, it's so nerdy. I went to an all girls school, dude. <laughs> like I was driving around with girls all the time. Yeah. I did get, though, being a camp counselor, very good at doing a full change in my sleeping bag, like in a <laughs> cabin, because I felt weird about like, you know, taking my clothes off around kids that weren't mine. <laughs> Even though yeah, I was in charge of them. So skill. I would like I would change in my sleeping bag <laughs> and just pop out. I definitely out. like changed in cars all the time, but like never yeah. with a boy. Really? Like, ever. Yeah. Who'd you change in front of? I don't, I mean, I remember a couple of times I was, there was like, I mean, there was one oh. I, I remember in particular, um, this boy that I kind of liked, but we, I don't know, we were, we just had to go somewhere and I was like, I got to change. I, but listen, part of it being a theater kid, I was so comfortable oh. going mm-hmm. backstage and you just, there's quick changes and you don't think twice yeah. about it. And it's not like yeah. your body, it's like your body. You just got to like yeah. change. Um, but did you do dance too? I did. Yeah. So you, there's a body awareness that dancers have that like clunky people like me are always kind of <laughs> mystified by like wow they know what you know their joints are supposed to do yeah how, but I remember know. feeling I also you know I was I, my boobs were developing it was high school like I was getting attention mm-hmm. from boys you know it was like there was all kinds of other things is going that when on you too, were doing your so. Mariah Carey thing wearing hoop earrings and oh, oh yeah that full-on yeah. like yeah r- uh, dark liner with the with the <laughs> uh f- frosty lip Yep. And uh, yeah, oh, all the nineties. Yeah. So all hold on, way. real life and then TV life. Brooke and Joy, or Brooke and Haley, and then Sophia and Joy flip flopped like a little. Bit. Joy's changing with dudes. Sophia's an all girl, and now Sophia's slutting it up on the show. <laughs> they really, they took this episode mm-hmm. to paint you two as polar opposites. Yeah, mm-hmm. they really did. Yes, they really did. And I will say the thing that. 
that I loved that we got, which thinking about, again, who was writing all this stuff for us, it seems even more like a miracle now. But Hill, when we had the scene, you know, in the hallway Mm -hmm. and like Brooke gets her bra back from Lucas and then you come and, you know, chase me out. And I watched myself like be more myself. Like she was just a kid. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. was like, no, he, I think he's just nice. And you could see that that was such a change for her and something that made her feel so excited. And it, that seemed like innocent and youthful to me. And then she switches it right back. Like, that's the thing I'm remembering now watching is that Brooke Davis, when she would let her real feelings come out, would always cover it with like a, hmm, it's going to be great when he sleeps with me. Hmm, it's going to be, try to Which, resist. You by know? the way, d- Brooke actually kind of came off to me as a virgin in this, in this episode. Like she's what, you know, it's a, a lot of big like, talk. Yeah. Like uh-huh. she's really trying to make everybody think something that's actually not true for whatever reasons yeah. going on in her personal life. But that's the whole thing is her through this first season, especially what I had to find for her was that she was actually just a really scared little kid who yeah. desperately was seeking validation anywhere that she could get it and was very willing to play the part of like, I have it all together when she didn't feel like that. Mm. So I a lot of girls out there moments. feel that way. When, mm-hmm. when we do merch, let's make a promise. Okay. I want joy to make these little bracelets, but out of like rose quartz and like yes. amethyst, like Ooh. let's class them up. I let's wrote it yes. down. <gasps> Did you? And then I need a Brooke Davis cheetah bra in my life. Like, yes, why don't I have too. one? I don't know. Girl, I want them pushed the up. The backseat Brooks bra. bras. Yeah. I oh feel like God. those would sell. I'm so in. I'm into it. Yeah. Guys, email us and tell us what you think. Would you Would you buy your uh, backseat <laughs> leopard bra and a fancy Cracker Jack bracelet? I'm thinking email like I a Heart very chic charm bracelet. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's yeah. our email address at iHeart? Dramaqueens at iHeartRadio.com. There it is. The other thing that stood out to me so big from from the back seat, actually, <laughs> there'd be a silver lining there. But when when I had to lean over and say, how many moments can you point to and say, that's when it all changed. Yeah. Perfect. And I keep asking him if he can feel it. Like, can you feel it? Everything mm-hmm. changed for you today. And then you keep seeing these moments where it all changes for each of us. Peyton gets her artwork accepted at thud and then also defends her artistic thesis yeah Haley it turns around and there's Nathan in the tutoring office and he says I need you to tutor me like we have these moments that we can point to for each of our characters and when Lucas looks at Brooke and says you don't have to act this way you know you're the and he's the first guy that's ever said that to you yeah we all have those little moments yeah and it was the beginning of seeing Brooke's um as sort of the voice of wisdom that she eventually became and grew and grew Mm. more and more into oh I love that it was cool it was really good and and I what I love is the foreshadowing of being in that that waxing parlor <laughs> and Brooke makes this whole thing about I want stability and I want a boyfriend but nothing mm-hmm. dramatic like you and Nathan like the foreshadowing there is so on point <laughs> Mhm uh-huh. it's so true um also we probably should talk about the Chad being naked with the basketballs <gasps> oh, oh my god, god. Oh, we God. should talk about that, Joy. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so apparently what they did was they cut a hole in the basketball <laughs> for Chad. But to... then wouldn't it have deflated? I don't know. How do basketballs they, it's work? like pa- paper mache. Um, I don't know. They made it was some like big prop thing that they made for him. Where does it where does it live now? Where is said Ooh, that's prop a good basketball now? That's a good it's question. It's probably in some creepy storage bin that has like a code on the front of it <laughs> in, a, in a warehouse at Warner Brothers, like yeah. somewhere in the valley and no basketball one will ever see it again. Strap. Yeah. Oh God. This is the dick ball. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Big fun episode. Um, and we also are very lucky this episode to have one of our dear friends joining us. He was I'm here from so the jump. Excited. Yeah. Um, yes. And so let's, we're going to go to break, but don't go anywhere because we have a total babe waiting for you. Hey, Hey. I 
ladies and gentlemen, one of our favorite, 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 favorite co-stars there from the very beginning. You may know him as Marvin Mouth McFadden. We know him from the Torkelsons. We know him as Minkus from Boy Meets World. Um, he's been in so many movies at this point. Um, he does all these David Fincher movies that put him on a level that make us all jealous. Um, for, uh, yeah, for like 30 seconds. <laughs> whatever, Lee. Oh, whatever. <laughs> he was in Zodiac. Also, you did like October Road with Greenberg? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh. We had Crazy. our Christmas movie, That's and right. interestingly enough, Rhoda Griffiths, who Rhoda played my mother, was in the episode. Was just yes. in this episode. Was now, in the episode that I wasn't, by the way. I was like, I had my notebook out, and I was like, where? Oh no, I'm not in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, we love Such you, Lee world, Norris, though. ladies and gentlemen. Hey. It's so good to see you. It's been I, the last time the four of us were together. I don't even remember. It's insane, but so long. I know. Was well, it a convention? Well, Probably. Maybe, but I feel like Soph and Hill, you were there, but I don't know if Joy made it. And like, I, Joy, I think the last time I saw you was when we did like uh, James and Steve Coletti's. Like, yeah, that's right. Although we did up. talk recently when you bought Girl Scout cookies for yes. my daughters. Oh my <laughs> Thank God. you. Those Girl <laughs> I Scout know. cookies. We, you, Sophia, myself, and Brian Greenberg all got very uh, giggly. <laughs> at a bar at a hotel in Wilmington the last time we did a convention yes. together there. Yes, we did. Remember what? it was going to be like, guys, we're oh, just going to meet for like five minutes. About? And by two five o'clock in the morning, later. we had the bartender ordering us pizza. Yes. We're like, please, can you feel uh, <laughs> We really need They're some like, carbs. Please, leave. <laughs> please, please. I please. That. Oh, Lee, are you in North so Carolina fun. right now? Yeah, yeah, I'm in North Carolina. And so weird, um, I was actually just in Wilmington. We went down to Wrightsville <gasps> Beach like two weeks ago. Um, oh. Just for beach vacation. And it was so trippy to be there. It was it coincided with the release of your first episode. So, of course, I'm like Whoa. listening in the car as I'm driving to Wilmington oh. and literally was like, the Brit, you know, seeing all the places and like being at Tower 7 and oh, just feeling so like cool. really connected to it in a different way. So what Lee, how, how did you get the job of of mouth? Like, how did mm. that come together for you? Yeah, you know, this first season was so crazy for me because, uh, or in the pilot, um, I was in school at Wake Forest, which is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for anybody that doesn't know, which is like three and a half hours from Wilmington where we shot. And, you know, I had done those shows as a kid and I sort of kept an agent around. But by the time I got to college, I'd seen kids like come into Boy Meets World, forget a line and get fired. And I was like, wow. oh, wow, this is this is like a business. This isn't just, you mm. know fun saying lines or whatever. So I, at that point was like, well, maybe I'll go to law school. Like when I was at Wake, I thought that's what I was going to do. I was like, it's kind of like being an actor, right? You're a lawyer, you get up and you, you know, you know, wax poetic and exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm present tell the story. facts and yeah. convince everyone. So that's what I was thought I was going to do. And then the audition for Ravens, One Tree Hill, you know, got sent to my agent. I knew it was shooting in Wilmington. My agent was like, just go to Wilmington and audition. All my friends were going on spring break. They were like going to Cancun, getting wasted. And I was like, well, I'm going to Wilmington to audition for this show. I'll never hear from it, whatever. Um, and then, you know, I did it. And they brought me back in to, I guess, do like a chemistry read with Colin Fickus. So that was my chemistry. Oh, <laughs> it was yay! like testing, you know, Jimmy and Mouth together. And, and Colin is someone that I knew. We grew up like auditioning in North Carolina together for stuff. So... Um, yeah, it, that's how it came about. And I have to give a lot of credit to Wake Forest. They were really cool to let me do the pilot and then to do the first season. You know, I was recurring. So I, not being a regular, I didn't want to, I, I really wanted to graduate because I was, it was my senior year at Wake when we were shooting the first season. So I was driving back and forth that first year between Wake mm. and and Wilmington riding papers in the trailer mm. all night at the River Court, driving back to Wake Forest, taking a test on like two hours of sleep, oh. getting back in my car, coming back to Wilmington. But it was, you know, it was crazy, but it was so worth it because I, I got to graduate and I got to do this show that I had no idea would take me 10 years of my life. So, Dude, weren't you in like an acapella group too? Hell I remember I you being like, like yeah, yeah, I remember he was in a group. <laughs> of course I was in, of course I was an acapella nerd, Hillary. You know, I was. I, I <laughs> loved it you'd be like hey man my group's performing on thursday if you guys want to come right. check it out <laughs> yeah 
Dude, our group, yeah. our group was the first co-ed acapella group on campus. That was like a big deal that it was men yeah. and women. Like this is a Southern college. Like it was like, yeah. we were like the risky kids that like could have <laughs> girls and guys in the same group. Like what are the they The risky acapella kids. Oh <laughs> yeah. my Wait, God. What was your jam? What was um, like, what was the jam that you guys performed? So we sang Sexual Healing and I oh. sang it as a duet <laughs> with a girl, my friend Susie. And it was, my friend Susie. Yeah. Oh uh, my yeah. God. So. Had you hung out in Wilmington before? Yeah. You know, growing up and I grew up in North Carolina when I wasn't in LA shooting the, the um, shows, I always came back to North Carolina because this is where my family and friends were. And so I had done um, two episodes of Dawson's just as like little throwaway characters and had gotten kind of a peek at that world and a lot of our crew. Um, and I did all those terrible TV movies in the 90s where I was like the kidnapped and battered and abused child. Um, <laughs> Wait, you know, give us some names. Give us names. Any what are they Place called? But Home was the name of one. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> and I was actually kidnapped and I didn't want to go home because Alan Thicke was my dad and he was abusing me. I mean, oh my God. you oh my can't God. even make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. but. Actually, that brings up a good point because you having grown up in this business... Yeah. Um, I kind of grew up, I started when I was 12, but I think you were younger when you started, right? How old yeah, were you? I was, when you... I was nine when I did the 12%. Yeah. So yeah. you really wow. grew up in this biz. I mean, what was that like from your perspective coming into Wilmington and seeing a bunch of us who were like, you know, some people who were super novice at, yeah. you know, 17, 18, I, I had been around a little bit longer, but you know, you, you must've known so much more about the business and what the expectations were and, you know, kind of watched us stumbling through it what, no. what what was that like no it was i mean you were so it, helpful like you, it's I so nice you were of you to say that i mean i i just remember coming in and you know i again sort of picking up on what i was just saying watching kids get fired like i yeah. came in with this very it's ingrained in you as a child actor you're like or back then it was like you hit your mark you know your lines you don't ruffle feathers you know i just wanted to work and be there and so I just tried to, you know, I was always the first one in the van to go to set. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't yes. want to give them any reason because yeah. I loved doing the show and I loved you guys. And I wanted to, you know, the mouth was just a total, literally a sideline character just had, you know, nothing to do with the start. So I had no idea whether they would keep writing for me or not. In fact, mm -hmm. Sophia, I remember one night we were in like I Heart New York pizza after, do you remember that place? Oh um, my God. Yes. Downtown, we'd had some drinks or whatever. And I, like, I just was convinced that they weren't bringing me back. And I was like, guys, it's been nice knowing you. I really enjoyed getting to meet you Aww. all. Like, I'm not going to see you. And you, so if you're like, shut up, we're going to make them bring you back. And I was like, I, I have no idea. You know, I just, didn't I was like, it. you are not leaving. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I will not allow it. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it was just coming in. I, you know, it was a totally different world than doing something like Boy Meets World, which was a sitcom mm -hmm. and was so contained. And I was really inspired by you guys because I watched you, you know, taking on these, we were, we were still kids, really. I mean, but yeah. we were growing up really quickly, quickly and figuring out these roles and figuring out things behind the scenes. And, you know, when I saw you guys stand up for things, I was like, oh, that's, well, can we even do that? Like, that's amazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> these girls don't know the rules. <laughs> that's what I'm like. I'm wondering if you just sat back and watched us step in landmine after landmine and you're like, oh, well, can't do that. Oh, no, no, I mean, I, I just, I'll never forget a day where I got really frustrated on set and we were all in our cast chairs and Lee just looked at me. It was, it was that scene on the quad. You know which one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, and yeah. Lee just looked at me, he goes, well, tomorrow's a new day. Like it was so, <laughs> like, like, like I'm a 90 year old character actor with a cigarette. <laughs> like, hanging on my mouth. You get over it, kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll be um, fine, kid. <laughs> no, I was totally inspired by you guys. And Hillary, you were so sweet to me at the pilot. Um, I remember I came in because Joy and so you guys hadn't gotten there yet. And mm -mm. Hill, I remember you came in and I knew you from MTV and I thought you were like, you're gorgeous and smart and cool, just like the epitome of cool. And, you know, I was just like number what, 12 on the call sheet. Like no one had to be nice to me. And you came you right up Minkus, to me baby. and you were like, <laughs> look, my brothers don't care about Chad Michael Murray. They care about Minkus. Like they were so, you were just, <laughs> made me feel so at ease. And I'll, I'll always love Yeah. You. I think I probably made you sign things. I was like, hold on, <laughs> I'm going to need you to like sign some stuff. Because Boy Meets World was like a huge deal when we were growing Huge. up. I mean, you yeah. were on a hit, hit show and like us doing the pilot of One Tree Hill, no one ever thought that would go. 
you know, so you yeah. were the godfather, you know, that had actually mm-hmm. done it. How long and, did Boy Meets World run? Um, I think they did, I don't know, six or seven seasons. But the thing about that mm-hmm. is, is I only did the first season and people people don't realize that. I think they really? sometimes think only I was the there. First? Yeah. I mean, the thing about that character yeah. was it was so, you know, it was such a fun and memorable character that I think people just and then I came back later and did like an episode where they graduated from high school and they brought me back. And then when they did their reunion show, they were cool enough to bring me in. And um, so, yeah, you know, and honestly, I have to say, I'm really glad actually that it worked out the way it did, because I don't know that I would have gotten the opportunity to do our show to do One Tree Hill if I'd been on that the whole time. Cause you know mm-hmm. how it is. You get locked into those roles. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And you guys knew it. We'd be out and like, you know, and people would scream Minkus from across the bar. And it's like <laughs> Yeah. If from I'd one been on season. the whole time from one season. That's right. So that's what I mean. I wow. almost feel like it was kind of fortuitous that, you know, I wasn't just so locked in, even though I I sort of mm-hmm. am. But. So the subtext here is that Lee can take a couple episodes and make an iconic yeah. Character. Are you my that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. Like, oh, what three Why do you scenes? Think David Fincher keeps this. calling you. you Hello, guys, you guys. I need to talk to you more often. <laughs> Lee, Lee, were you a fan? Were of you basketball? Hype girls? That's right. Were Were you a basketball fan when you started? I mean, you had a lot of diet. This was like a like medical jargon or like legal jargon. The amount right. that you just had to like. Yes. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. I mean, how was that for you? Yeah, no, I was. I was because I was at Wake Forest, which is a big ACC basketball school. So mm-hmm. when I came in for the audition, I was actually wearing my it was called like the freaking Deacons because the Demon Deacons were our mascot. And I was into <laughs> like the basketball club that like the fans that like no amped out for tickets and you sweet little bunny. You know, I mean, I loved it. I could, there was no way I was ever going to play basketball, but, it, you know, I loved what? watching it, you know, so. Um, yeah, no, I was a fan and that was, you know, nice for me to, to sort of channel that and bring that into those early days when that's really all he was. Um, and it wasn't until, you know, like later in the season when the cheerleading and the broken mouth boy toy stuff that they really started to kind of flesh him out. Mm -hmm. I loved that the most. That's like truly one of my favorite storylines of my whole nine years, but I'm, I'm curious about the the jargon and the lingo, like you being part of that whole basketball scene at Wake Forest, yeah. were there, um, were there like college basketball reporters that you were listening to prep to like learn the way they talk? And uh, there he goes down the line and he shoots and he's got like, it's such a way that they do been. that. I probably should have been doing that, but I don't, I mean, I just watch a lot of ESPN in general. So I was so just, you just more take, yeah. And, I, and okay. the thing about mouth is, is he was, he didn't have to be professional. Like this was a kid who was just passionate and was sort of, you know, he was, he was, you know, the nerdy kid who was, who was trying to find his voice. So I didn't, I think the great thing was I didn't have to be perfect at it. There was Mm. room to kind of be like a novice about it. Um, Mm. I think it was just enough that I sort of naturally enjoyed watching the game, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a lot. And like sitting on that picnic bench at the river court, my ass was like <laughs> chafed after sitting there all, you know, you know, we'd be out there like all night. 17 all hours. Night. Yeah. 17 it's, hours. It's like insta bonding. There's no other business I can think of where it's like this. I mean, mm. maybe, maybe military. I don't know where you just get thrown in with people, a bunch of people you don't know. And yeah. all of a sudden you're up all night together. You're spending long hours and like lots of time sitting around, lots of time just mm-hmm. quietly available to uh, talk and you know it's it's really cool did you did mm-hmm. you feel because y- you were there for all those river court nights and everything that was your gig so did you feel like you were able to really connect in with the whole group or did you feel like yeah, yeah t- what was your experience like in the first season those I don't know about you guys but those were always my favorite scenes yeah. when they got all of us together and we just got you know it was 3 a.m and we're just you know Goofy. Colin, yeah. Colin Moss is singing like the theme song to the Golden Girls. And we're just like, <laughs> like, like we're, you know, that that was the most fun. And I feel like, we, you know, being and what really struck me, because you your podcast has inspired Andrew and I, we've gone back and started watching it now because we're like, mm. oh, we're watching all these other shows in quarantine and stuff. So, you know, we started going back. And so we watched the pilot this weekend and the, through up through this episode. And it's just so crazy to me, like to to see, especially in this episode, you see so much of downtown at the river, yeah. the river walk mm-hmm. and all of that. And to think that that was the backdrop for our show, but that was the backdrop for our real lives too. So it's yeah. like, I'm seeing these, 
the steps that they're sitting on for the burning boat thing. And like, that's the steps that we were like, you know, kind of buzzed on at 2 a.m. talking about. Yeah, like, Greenberg life. playing a guitar. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just so surreal. But yeah, those are by far my favorite scenes, you know. Mm. Lee, were there any like misconceptions about Mouth? Anything that, you know, people maybe didn't quite understand about him or anything that you really felt you wanted people to understand about him? I don't know. You know, I mean, I think as far as Mouth, um, I think what's interesting about him is you see him as sort of the nice guy. Um, and yet he was written in a different time. And I think this is true about all of our characters, right? I mean, there was things that were written for him that now when I go back and look at it, I'm like, oh, I don't know if he should have walked up to Brooke and just kissed her without asking at the high school. You know what oh, I mean? It's like, God bless you, Lee. I don't know. There's just things like that. But, you know, at the same time, we're making a TV show. And if we all just did the right thing all the time, it would be boring. So I understood that it was like heightened and um different but yeah i mean i don't know there were things where he like threw the brick at the windshield of brooke's car and i was like where, did, where does this come from you know what i mean it's like I'm <laughs> yeah. reading the script and yeah i'm like here's the child actor in me like gotta keep this job so i'm just gonna do whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or just like you know hillary hillary like in the later season Ma mouth is like in a fat suit and i was like what is this like oh, i, you know, I had no idea it just Lee took a turn told me sometimes. about this yeah. Just like, I forgot you know, we did our that. Christmas movie a couple years ago and we're all staying in like a Hampton Inn in Louisiana and Lee yeah. would come over at the end of the workday and we'd just talk about stuff that, same way, like we've all kind of decompressed together and Lee's like, oh yeah, do you remember like when Mouth was in a fat suit? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. I totally missed all of that. Yeah. So I don't, I'm miscon these aren't so much misconceptions, it's just... I, I think that he can be viewed through a different lens now. And I, my hope is that I always, no matter what was written, I just, I always wanted people to see his, his real heart that I, he wanted to be a loyal and good mm -hmm. friend, whether he always did the right thing is, is definitely up for debate, but I hope that, cause it was important for me to be on the show. I mean, there was, there was pushback when they went to make me a regular, the network was like, well, it doesn't look like a model. And I was like, come on guys. Like, you know, do you, how many James and Chad's do you need? Like, I thought what was cool about our show was that it was, it was a little more grounded and it was nice yeah, to see so a human face looking back. And so I, I've always, of course, been protective of him because I spent so long playing him. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, I understand that there are people that, that can feel differently about him. So did the writers ever like did you have input with the writers when at, at some point as you got as you stayed longer and got more comfortable like just being there and being a part and, and be, really became yeah. a part of the show were mm -hmm. there times when the writers would come to you and be like hey what would you have any ideas or things like that no <laughs> <laughs> that did not happen um and again i think it all stems from that just how i was raised so like right. i'm just gonna see this through um but and i do want to be careful too I, there there are writers on the show that i love and that i'm friends with yeah. and listen coming Absolutely. up with storylines for these all of these characters for nine years yeah it's been in plates it's no wonder yeah. that i ended up in a fat suit like i mean you know at some point <laughs> what are you going to do for these characters so i i, yeah. I want to be careful and say i loved playing him he was a great character he got to do funny stuff he got to mm -hmm. do drama so you know i'm grateful for that but mouth sure. was special because he was yeah. the everyman you know what yeah. i mean like yeah. mouth represented every kid in high school that wasn't captain of the basketball team exactly. wasn't captain of the cheerleading squad yeah. like he's an important person mm -hmm. for our fan base to be able to connect to right however mouth pulled chicks like yes. <laughs> every chick on the show had a mouth episode i know is what yeah. i'm saying no. i never we had our it. Our go kart rendezvous. We did. You and Soph had, so what fun. was you and Soph's? What was your romance? What'd you guys do? Limo? I took Mouth to a strip club. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> right, right. We no, had no. like a night in a limo. All. We were all dressed up. Oh, God, I can't wait to get to that episode and figure <laughs> out what in God's name we were doing. <laughs> but I just remember that Lee and I were both so uncomfortable and you know this had to be brooke davis's idea of course and we right. and i am like what is happening and the writers were like yeah, it's gonna be great and i was like um i feel really uncomfortable and you sweet angel you were like i just this feels i don't know and you just kept putting your hands up because like you didn't want the girls to think you were going to try to touch them and so the girls that had been hired to like be these i mean they were strippers 
yeah. who were hired to come on the show drew us little notes and smiley faces oh on their God, pasties. Oh my God, I totally forgot about that. You're Aww, right. pasty because, faces? Yeah, so they wore <laughs> pasties because like they knew we were just they wrote notes out. on their pasties. Yeah, yeah. like so hi, I did love that the show. Once. Like little smile. <laughs> what? what? Joy. 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 I had no idea uh, that was a stripper how thing. Story, how did this story work around to Joy saying I did that? Uh, like, when were sorry. you wearing pasties in someone's in lap? the back of What's a high happening? school boy's car? No, it was not. It was not One Tree Hill. It was a pilot I did later, uh, and uh, I had to do my first like sex scene, and I had pasties on, and I just did in glitter, oh like God. up here with arrows, like uh, you know, up on one and here on the <laughs> like, other. Look at my face. Please. Yeah, and then oh stop it was another one. Oh Lee, you had multiple God. strip club opportunities on our show where did well, that pure gold I, I became the stripper later yeah <laughs> oh my god hey. that's right yeah how long yeah, did it take before you were comfortable enough to show us your dance moves because for anybody that doesn't know lee is the best dancer on the, the best. show so good well i mean this that was in my younger age now i'm now i have a two-year-old and i can't even bend over but um <laughs> I, you know, well, I think you guys, I've heard you talk about this on the earlier episodes. Like we saw pieces of ourselves start to being worked into the characters and you mm-hmm. know, we would go out, have some drinks or whatever, and we would do, blow off scene. We would go to like Oliver Twist and it was 80s night. Oh, you my, know? God. And, like, oh my God. God. <laughs> we would go out and just dance and uh, we were having fun, right? I mean, and it, oh. but do you remember like downtown Wilmington and it being a big deal to get into Oliver Twist? Like you don't read the line in Wilmington. <laughs> like you were in Manhattan or something. <laughs> Guys, we're on the list. At Oliver well, Twist. and then we could only go to certain places because James could only get into like certain places right. that they were living in, so. not that he was doing right. anything illegal no, not at all um, not that he wasn't 21 yet but lee i will say like you and i laid the foundation of our friendship yeah. on loving hip-hop yes and going dancing do you remember our song I don't, I'm gonna uh, three, of course nine. i do <laughs> We loved Wait, the Yin Yang Twins. Which one is it? We loved the, the Yin Yang Twins. Twins. Oh my God. God I remember no, that. That is our fucking song. We would and be like, you know, I, we would be like across the like bar or whatever. If this song would come on, <laughs> it was like, you know. This it was like part. the Red Sea would part because Lee and I would be screaming, running toward each other, like some weird drunken version of like a slow-mo love moment in like an 80s movie. And we'd just hit the middle of the floor and like we'd get the whole bar dancing. Yeah. And this didn't happen once. It happened all, all the, the time. time. Like yeah. all the time. That's how we became friends with Jane Beck. Cause she heard we would like go out yeah. dancing. So she started coming with us and then Jane would do push ups on the uh, edge of the pool table. That's right. Oh, that's up, at, up at Steph's bar, the one upstairs, Odessa. That's right. Odessa, the pool oh table. My God, yes. Right. And we were all like, Jane's the coolest person we've ever met. The coolest. And, and for everyone listening at home, Jane Beck is, you know, one of our very best friends from the show, worked in our wardrobe department for years, is like a brilliant, badass, creative Love woman her. who also is the strongest person I've ever met yes. and can do push ups in a handstand. Yeah. And I have to say, too, Guys who are listening, <laughs> don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid to get on the dance floor. This yeah. Is how, I mean, this is how I met my wife. Like, yeah. This is how yeah. Girls, you can like, always get the ladies with dancing. There's tons of guys standing on oh, the yeah. side and they're not going to, they're not going to get nope. in there. So go out, do it, have fun. And you never know when it's going to take you. But yeah, then I of course that. it showed up in the script, you know, three episodes later where Mouth's like, spying on cheerleaders and learns the cheerleading routine. And- oh, God. oh my god it's yeah. so precious yeah what was your favorite episode lee oh my god um i i mean i had different ones for different reasons i mean i think i think 316 the school shooting is like obviously mm. important for a lot of reasons not yeah. just the obvious ones about the subject matter but also like the whole you know, we didn't know if the show was going to make it because that's when the networks were combining. And we were, I think we all felt like sort of spurred to try to do something to prove like we're worthy to like continue on or whatever. So Mm -hmm. that one's special. And then I love, I I love the, I honestly, I love the last, the very last episode where Mouth Mm -hmm. gets to give his um, speech about um, what you do matters and how you do it matters. And they set up Mm -hmm. a scholarship fund based on Mm -hmm. Jimmy and all that. So there's pieces of different ones, but and then all the times we went on trips, I, you know, it was just so fun. Whenever we get, it was like sleep trips weekends, you were know? fun. They were He's enjoyable. a good traveling buddy. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. 
Lee's do also you, the guy that you want in your corner. We're going to get into a little segment in one second. But before oh we gosh. do that, I need everyone to know if you're ever at a wedding <laughs> and you need to sit next to someone that will get you in trouble, it is <laughs> okay. Lee Norris. We went to Tyler Hilton's <laughs> wedding together. Oh, my and, God. And they sat us at the actor table at the reception. And an actor who will remain nameless, <laughs> who was oh, much no. more famous than we are. We'll tell you after. We tried to include them in our conversation <clears throat> because, right, like, we're all, like, small town, southern kids. Like, hey, man, let's be friends. You know, that's you engage when you meet strangers. Was, was this person by themselves at the wedding? No. No, they oh, were okay. with their girlfriend. Oh, okay. But <laughs> Lee and I try to get this person to, like, engage and... <laughs> We were like, Mistake. oh, we, <laughs> terrible <laughs> idea, right? And so we're like, hey, what's up? And they just stood up and walked away, <gasps> no. just like left. <laughs> and so what? as the night progresses and Lee and I are on the dance floor and drinking drinks and having a great night, the whole rest of the night we'll have to beep this. Lee would yell out, Fuck you <laughs> to this guy across, <laughs> across the wedding. And I was just like, it's such a strong move to know oh who God. your circle of friends are and to be mm-hmm. like, we're going to roll deep tonight, friends. And I don't care that it's someone's nuptials. We're going for it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's the best date. You're That's just a good date. so phenomenal. Lee, stories. even your we got wedding. stories, guys. Your wedding was yeah. the best. I like, I have seen photos from your wedding where I'm just like, who is that person I was dancing with? And then like, there's just, we were all just raging. It was like a sea of bodies. So fun. It was like a music festival, but it was also mm-hmm. like a very beautiful, gorgeous, like North Carolina on the water yeah. event. Mm-hmm. But like, we just can't help ourselves. We turn it into, we turn it into a rager if <laughs> we're all in the same room. <laughs> yin yang twins. What do you oh, want yeah, no, the, wed- the wedding planner was like, do you want a band or a DJ? That's like the big question when you're having mm. a wedding. Right? And I was like, Looking around Wilmington, I'm like, I don't know if there's any bands that are going to be able to pull off Ying Ying Twins. So how about a DJ? So, you know, they, they brought in a DJ and we just, you know, lost our minds. I loved it. When that song yeah. turned, Andrea is so sweet. Y'all, Andrea is Lee's wife. And our song came on and she just literally handed you to me. And I was like, thank you. Thank Take you, sister that's, friend. This that's is how our you moment. Know she loves you. Yeah. 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 I know Andrea loves me because of that moment. God, and I mean, all the years of our friendship, obviously. Yeah. But Lee Norris, the moment I realized you really loved me and that we were like really in it and we'd become best friends was when two, might have been three years into our friendship, Yeah. you finally admitted to me that you do not ever allow anyone to eat off your plate. <laughs> ever. Really? And I, I have eaten off of your plate since so many times second night we had dinner together Deluxe. i just was like oh that looks delicious i'm gonna try that and lee i didn't know was like oh my god and he would eat around the bites i had taken for months but didn't have the heart to like break my little italian like family style spirit and and eventually he got over it and would you know we would just share food but you told me years later, later. and i was like you sweet human well there was something clearly wrong with me i don't know why it was just one of those weird things but like i don't i grew up as as an only child as as you did so and so i just wasn't used to like that feast or famine environment of like you know i just i (laughs) don't touch my things guys god we do a segment here called Deep thoughts with the drama queens, Lee. This is oh, what we're going to okay. do with all our guests. Um, Joy, why don't you hit them with some deep thoughts? All right. So, Lee, um, I would like <laughs> to hear what your favorite and least favorite storyline with your character was. Oh, my God. Show, that you remember. No. I know we were saying, you know, it's hard to remember all of them because it's a lot of episodes yeah, and a yeah. lot of in and out. So, I mean, but that just you whatever recall. comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah, there's too many. I mean, the I think one of one of my favorites, I can't pin down a favorite. One of my favorites was just the way the whole storyline with Jimmy Edwards played out mm. um, with Colin being a friend of mine and him coming back and doing that amazing, mm. powerful performance. And I, I know you'll have him on to talk about that. Um, yeah. So doing that and then like the follow up episode where like Mouth gets, um, I think, takes Jimmy's yearbook and like gets it signed mm. by everyone and takes it to Jimmy Edwards' mom. Mm-hmm, who yeah. was played by the sweet, amazing actress who, who's in North Carolina, who's a professor at UNCW, who was just 
like she started crying in the scene and I started crying. I was just like, mm. I, you know, th those are, that was a really, that was a favorite. I loved the relationship with um, Brooke. I loved that it evolved from this, him having a crush on her thing to just being, you know, like, like we are like, fr mm -hmm. like friend, like good friends, you know, and just, um, I, I always loved those scenes. Um, least favorite. I, the scene fat when, Mal when, I mean the fat suit, <laughs> you know, just whatever. Um, I can't but, wait till we get there. It has so much has been made of this thing and I can't wrap my head around it. I'm like, I, what? you know, I think the other one that I that I sometimes cringe about was like mouth and his he like hooked up with his boss at the TV station and I was just oh, like oh that's right I was challenging um, <laughs> that you know yes. again it's just it's hard it's hard to come up with storylines but um, I you know I, I for in general I really I, I had a lot of fun so and yeah. what about when you're if you have a friend who's like coming to Wilmington, tell us what yeah. your number one must do. I mean, especially being a North Carolina boy, like yeah. what, what do you tell your friend? Hey, here's what you got to hit when you're in it's Wilmington. It's all about food. Um, yep. and <laughs> so don't share your plate, but you have to go to, uh, <laughs> you have to go to Brossery and you have to get their mac and cheese, Yes, which I just did, uh, two oh, weeks ago. And Brasserie du Soleil. Yes. I love that we cheese. all still go there. That's where I had dinner when I was at yeah. Yeah. too. the tartar. Yes, ah, so, good. Good. so good. Um, go there and get the mac and cheese. Go to Tower Seven and just fish tacos. Everything yes. there. Uh, um, margaritas. Yeah, what it's I all would about give the food. for a Tower Seven moment right now. Ooh, I know. And then sadly, Can Deluxe is no longer Deluxe, but the space oh. is still there. It's it's something. It's called something else. But is it a similar vibe? From Deluxe? It's, yeah, it is. It's still got like that nice exposed brick bar. I mean, if anybody really is a fan of the show and wants to see where we like lived our lives and aired out some some talks, like the <laughs> bar at, at Pen, I think it's called Pinpoint now, like just sit there and like our it's ghosts got our are secrets. roaming around. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you yeah. remember when we shot the pilot, the Dawson's Creek kids were still wrapping That's their right. last season and like oh. we would just watch them in the window of Deluxe like, OK, <laughs> OK. And the second they vacated the premises, that's when we like infiltrated and we're like, well, I guess it's ours. It's ours. <laughs> it's I think we'll about that it. bar and I think about that amazing line we all loved from the first episode when Karen says that place knows too much. Yeah. And I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> yep. Deluxe knows too Deluxe much. Deluxe and Firebelly. Oh, my yeah. God, Firebelly. Amazing. That's All I'm fun. saying yeah. is, did, didn't they have, like, super cheap tacos at Firebelly? Like, you get a taco yes. for, like, 50 cents. Yep. Hillary, I think you and I used to go. Like, we would meet each other on, like, 30. Oh, yeah. I lived like, above it. tacos, yeah. They yeah. would order that beer Ho Garden for me because that's yeah. the beer that I liked. And when I moved, they gave me all the cases that they had in the Aww. basement because they were like, no one else drinks this shit, Hillary. <laughs> like, you're the only one. So if you're moving, take that's it. So take funny. it with you. That's, yeah. Wilming that's Wilmington. That sums Aww. up Wilmington. Good Lee, neighbors. I I'm curious from your perspective as uh, – I mean, you were there with us in, in – so we have all these onset memories and we were saying it's hard. To, it was hard to separate what the audience was seeing yeah. and why the show kind of took on this pop culture zeitgeist, like phenomenal, like mm -hmm. just went, went off and yeah. blew up. God, I can't talk. Um, but you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, for all of us, it was hard to really see why and how that happened and what that was like for the audience because we were, they were all wrapped up with the behind the scenes stuff that we were experiencing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because you were in and out a little bit more, yeah. can you explain a little bit about why, like, why do you think the show just took off the way that it did and stuck? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, I think particularly mm -hmm. being at Wake Forest as a senior in college, while we, while the first season started airing, like when the pilot aired, I was at Wake and my friends like threw a premiere party in the like in the auditorium in the like communications auditorium Aww. and like my friend made cookies and <laughs> you know we were we were in the seats like watching it and i was like telling them all i was like because the oc had just come out and we were yeah. like there was all this fanfare and i was like well it's kind of like the oc but better hopefully and like it's a little more like 
North Carolina. And, you know, I was just <laughs> trying less to explain sexy, it. Less sexy, less <laughs> sexy. Um, and so, yeah, I think it was an interesting perspective to be able to see like real kids like watching it and mm. reacting to it. And yeah, I think it's a, it's a lot of what you guys have touched on, I think. Um, I think just to be perfectly honest, I think you three are a huge reason of why the, the vulnerability and the things mm. that you guys tapped in, into as actresses um, it just felt a little more real and grounded, I think, than some of the other stuff that was out there. Um, and I love that we started with that small town feel and that mm. it wasn't all like, you know, kids, just rich kids, like that there was that sort of soul to it. I think that's what drew, you know, all of us to it as actors even. Um, yeah. So yeah, and just watching that play out at school and seeing kids' reactions, that's a lot of what I saw. Um, but you know, it's it's cool to go back now and watch it and as an adult and see it clicking in different ways and as a dad and mm. kind of just, you know, it's totally different. Yeah, now that you're a dad, like, yeah. Lee, you've done a little bit of everything. You've done a ton of TV, you've done a ton of movies. Like, like in this chapter, what would you want to do next? Me, I want like a cushy Disney Channel job where I just play a mom <laughs> that comes in and like wags my finger and then I go home, you know? Yeah, like yeah. what's what's your dream gig at this point uh, in your career? I don't know. I mean, I honestly I feel so lucky. Like I feel really fulfilled in a lot of ways. I mean, for me, yeah. any character that is like even going off and doing the little role in Zodiac um, was so fun for me because it wasn't the nice kid. It was this creepy kid who's like out yeah. with this married woman and like he's wearing three layers of clothes and like mm. something's <laughs> up with this kid. Like, you know, just playing mm. sort of off characters is kind of fun for me because um, it's just so mm. different than the quintessential nice guy or nerdy character. So anything that offers depth like that is fun. But, you know, I'll still do the nice guy stuff too. And what's the- Greyhound about? Tell us about Greyhound. Yeah. That's your next project. Great. So Greyhound was this amazing movie that was supposed to have a great you know big release in theaters pre-covid obviously um and so Mm -hmm. when covid came along it ended up um apple tv snapped it up and um made it available but yeah it's tom hanks um tom it's just tom hanks guys (laughs) lee's off working with tom hanks in the world (laughs) he he um wrote the script based on a book um and you know they asked if I wanted to audition for it. It was like messenger number two. And I was like, I don't care if it's messenger 47. If I get to hang out with Tom Hanks for two months, I will audition <laughs> for it. whatever, you know? So I did. And, and I was so lucky to get to do it. And I spent two months um, in Louisiana shooting with him and other guys. And we were on this, um, you know, they made the, the fake bow of the ship and we were on a gimbal that was uh, controlled electronically so they were like shifting us around and throwing water on us and wind. Wow. And it was like a master class to just stand five feet from tom hanks and watch him day in and day out and then you wow. know go up and have my interactions with them and it was just it was it, that's one of those jobs where it's like i don't care if this movie ever does anything i don't care to make from it like just to have that experience like you know i just feel lucky that I got to watch it and see it. But anyway, it's on Apple TV Plus now. You can stream it. If you're into World War II movies, it's really amazing to see the Navy aspects of all of it. We Mm -hmm. got to talk to some actual World War II survivors that were still alive when we were shooting. And that was like, for me, as I was an English major and a history buff, and to get to talk to those guys who Mm. were on these ships and hear about their experiences was like, I mean, just the coolest thing ever. So. Well, you have to direct now. You (sighs) have to direct. You have been doing this for so long and you have such good instincts. Like, Mm -hmm. I I, just so direct us. Yeah, let's just do, you know, let's do another Christmas movie or a reunion or something. And I'll I'll just, I just want to hang out with you guys. Christmas and Firebelly. It'll be tacos. (laughs) (laughs) Christmas and Tower Seven. Exactly. Lee, you're in charge. Yep. And there'll be an impromptu dance off. Oh my They're messy. God. I can't wait. I actually wonder, because we had so many great artists on the show. So, yeah. we, you know, you've, you're married, so we can't get someone to come play your wedding. But if you were going to pick any of the artists who came and played at Ugh. Trek to mm. do your next birthday party, is there someone at the top oh of your God. list? Or is it just the yin-yang twins forever? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, you know, I, I God, we had, we were so spoiled. I mean, with every, yeah. like Cheryl Crow was on the show and, yeah. um, I always loved the Jimmy world guys. I thought those guys were oh, so yeah. nice. Mm. And, um, you know, we went down and like saw them in Myrtle beach and they mm-hmm. nicely invited us backstage. And that I just so love those guys and I love their music. Um, like, God, the music was so good. I'm like watching, as I'm going back and watching it now, I'm like writing down songs. I'm like, I haven't downloaded this because I'm not <laughs> cool enough anymore to know like what the good music is. So we need iPods. We're selling cheetah bras. We're selling <laughs> Joy iPod Crystal shuffles. bracelets and iPod shuffles. <laughs> oh, with iPod iPod shuffles. <laughs> Preloaded with all the one dream songs. Those, right? Do you remember when they gave us those little flip cans that were like the little videos? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh things. God. Yeah. What were those things called? They were oh, called flip cans. They were flip called flips. Yeah. I wonder if mine's still around, guys. What, what is on those? <gasps> <gasps> All right. We're gonna do. We're gonna do an attic scavenger hunt. Okay. Oh, uh, man. I know Paul yeah. still has his somewhere. He, I, I'm oh, almost wow. positive he does. Well, we know Antoine has his too. So apparently, has Antoine told all of you guys this? But he no. has tons of footage of us oh my God. tons and tons and tons oh and gosh. i'm like are you gonna turn it into a documentary and he's like i don't know sis maybe and i'm just like oh god oh, oh god. god maybe yeah. maybe we should take it, it first. and look at it we'll have a screening yeah. night i can't yeah. even imagine what he has it's exciting um lee will you come back Will oh you come God, back and please. just like visit us all the time? I'll come back anytime. You don't even have to record it. I just want to hang out with you guys. I love you. We miss you. We I'm so glad you're doing you. this. You. And um, yeah, Andrea and I are going to be listening and watching along. So yes, I would love to come Kiss back. Andrea, Thank kiss you. the baby. I love you guys. Yes, I will. please. I will. Love you guys. Hug Thank you. Hugs. Bye, right. Lee. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Love Aww. you, bud. I just love him Aww. so much. Honestly, like Lee is who you call when you need to bury a body. He is true blue. So good. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so talented. Honestly, I'm not even joking when, when I like, you know, kid that he creates iconic characters. Mm -hmm. He does. He really understands all the layers. I mean, he built in a lot of layers into mouth. That easily could have just been like a one note thing. And he built a lot of layers in. Mm -hmm. And when you watch the way he works, you know, he gave the same kind of dedication of character and empathy and intellect on our funny little CW show as he does working with David Fincher, working with Tom Hanks. I mean, he (laughs) shows up and is so just good and creative. I, it's funny, you know, when he talks about standing with, with Tom Hanks and it feeling like a masterclass, I remember I have like flashes of days on set where we'd be doing something and I, Every once in a while, I'd have a thought of like, you got get back in the scene because I'd be watching Lee work. And then Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yep, I got to be Brooke Davis now. Yep. Mm. (laughs) Okay, let me say my line. Like he he would distract me with the ingenuity of the choices he would make. So cool. He never leaned into the Steve Urkel of it all. Do you know what I mean? Like he could have easily made mouth a joke and instead he made them made him this really like empathetic every man that like everyone could connect to everybody wanted mouth to win mm-hmm. yeah you know, they wanted mouth to get the girl which mm-hmm. girl on our show did you like him with best kelsey kelsey was how old was kelsey what, what was her character's name Gigi. 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 Yeah. yeah i think Little she Gigi. was 19 i think she or, or maybe younger oh no wait no. younger 16 no. She was like, I think she or lied 16. and said she was 16. <gasps> Baby, I think she was like 13, 14. I think, I think she was no. incredibly young. <sighs> Maybe 15. Yeah. I don't know. 13, 14. Maybe. <gasps> um, because there was also Erica, right? Erica Marsh. Oh, oh yeah. right. Ka- uh, Kath Bayless. Kathleen ba- Bayless, yeah. Oh, right. talk about a dancer. Kathleen Mouth. Bayless. Mouth. Mouth. The Mouth. sweetest. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Oh so man. Yeah, and then Liz Arnois, Shelly, the clean teen. Oh yeah. They had their entanglement. I just th- I thought him and Gigi were so cute together. Him it was cute. Cassie. But I loved I loved later when he wound up with Lisa. Goldstein. Yes, that was oh, a winning pair. Yeah. Oh, their sweet relationship. Yeah. Oh. Frankly, I'm mad I never kissed him. I know. Me too. Yeah. Come on. Damn. Hello. Never got a shot. Um, girls, is it time for most likely to? 
I mean, let's hit it. Let's spin the wheel. Can we get a drum roll? Spin yeah. the wheel. Spin the wheel. Join, join the, the CIA. CIA. Who is most likely to join the CIA? And this is characters or actors or both? Oh, any old Anything. Buddy. Throughout the any entire run of the show. Most likely yeah, to join so. the CIA. Ooh, the CIA. Very <laughs> mysterious. Barry. <laughs> You know what, Joy? Whitey. You're right. You're right. Because Barry Corbin, I want to say, is like from New Jersey. He was like a Shakespearean actor. Like what? From, Barry with his Southern and, accent. And, his... and he decided to become a cowboy as an adult. Mm. Hold on a second. Look, Google Barry Corbin. And he created this <laughs> whole other persona. And it worked. And it tricked and everybody. It's just who he is now. No, he, it says here he was born in Texas, but he told me he lived in New Jersey for a long time. Hold on. Mm, maybe he was in the CIA when he was in Jersey. I'm saying Honestly. he's telling stories. I will say, though, after our analysis of Lee Norris's incredible acting skills, I feel like he'd be great in the CIA. Oh, yeah, he could pull it off for sure. As oh. like one of those actors, like, you know, they've been doing yeah. it since the 40s. I guess they would have actors... Betty Grable was was mm-hmm. working for, you know, so mm-hmm. that you fly over and you just go to a restaurant for dinner, but you're actually like passing off a package to somebody in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I think we could pull that off. Yeah. Yeah. Because he can he can be the life of the party and he can completely, you know, put his three layers on and disappear in the corner. And it. Oof. I wish he was still here. Good. We should do this I with know. our guests next time. I, keep I know. <laughs> All right, so which character would join the CIA? We have a couple, Ooh. like, teammates, but who is elusive? I mean, Karen disappeared for a very long time and, like, yeah. came back with a man that none of us knew. Like, yeah, Andy? Andy. Cute Andy. Cute she Andy. had a whole other life that we never yeah. got to see. She was also, definitely in the CIA. Michael Trucco's character, who <gasps> suddenly appeared out of, like, nobody the knew The race car guy? Yeah. I'm not complaining Uncle about Cooper. that. Truco was Uncle a babe. Cooper. Truco was such a babe. Is such mm. a babe. Um, <laughs> who else? Yeah. Mm. Those feel like real good choices to me. Yeah. Okay. We're good at this game. All right. We'll play it again next week. <laughs> <laughs> good. Thank you guys for joining us. Episode Yay. three of One Tree Hill. We're so excited to watch it. Come back next week and watch Watch another. Watch another and talk with us about it. Well, listen to us talk, but you know, we want to hear your thoughts too. So <laughs> send us your an questions email and reach out to us. Yeah, and guys, we are loving your feedback on socials, hearing about your realizations and the scenes you had forgotten about and your artwork. And, and mm-hmm. even you all talking to us about some of the things we've said. I mean, we're just buds talking to each other. We forget. And then you'll quote us on Twitter. And I'm like, oh my God, we did say that this week, didn't we? (laughs) Um, Do you know, so real quick, we're going to end with this. My son finally, after all these years, thinks I'm cool. Because do you know who follows drama queens on Twitter? Who? John Cena. (gasps) No. Stop it right now. No, he does not. So John Cena, if you're listening, come. Hey girl, you can, you can hang with us, girl. Yes. (laughs) John Cena, come (gasps) hang on our show and tell us all about why you love it. School drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens.